Hello everyone and welcome back to The Geek Wave. This is the low budget show. It's the show so low it has no budget. And this week, it is in a galaxy far away. Because there was a lot of stuff happening this weekend in the world of Star Wars. And I'm not going to get into Obi-Wan. I'm not going to get into Obi-Wan. We'll pr maybe do a big episode talking about that later. Look, Obi-Wan will be coming to the channel and the podcast feed at some point. You bet your bottom dollar that's happening. So don't worry, it's on the way at some point. We're going to be talking the rest of Celebration. Star Wars Celebration was this weekend. It was in Anaheim this year. I believe they already confirmed next year or the next Celebration. It's going to be going back to London. Hopefully I can manage to find a way to get over there. I love to go to Star Wars Celebration. It looks like such a fun event. Everyone is just enjoying themselves. I love when you can see a community of people just all understanding a reference. That, like, that is such a fun thing. It's such a cool experience. And everything I saw looks really cool, so we'll get into that as we go through stuff. I also do have, like, a topic we're going to discuss for a little bit. Not Nothing, like, too major. Just a little thing I wanted to bring up because it was something that was, like, on my mind as all of this was happening. So we'll talk about that too. But before we really dive into the world of Star Wars, we have a couple pieces of news we do have to get through before we do that. First off, this is a fun one. So there was kind of just like a thing that Discovery was like to J.J. Abrams. Hey man, we asked you to make a lot of stuff. You didn't give us any scripts for that stuff. Why? He still got paid a lot of money. At some point, he just has to deliver something. And it'll be okay. So, don't be surprised if in the next year, next two years, there is an original J.J. Abrams property. And then his name attached to some DC thing. Whatever. That I mean, that's cool. But that's not really the news I wanted to talk about when it came to J.J. Apparently, he's going to be developing a live-action Speed Racer series at Apple. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is weird. And first off, there is... A lot of conversation we could probably have about an anime adaptation into live action, especially for an American audience. When it's not an American audience doing it, I think it works better because suddenly you have the actual influence being there. But the recent Cowboy Bebop wanted to look so much like that that it really destroyed its own creativity. And maybe I should really kind of dive deeper into Cowboy Bebop to see if it actually does feel like something or it feels hollow. It felt hollow. But the interesting thing about Speed Racer is that they already had one perfect movie that nobody watched because it was too weird. And this is the thing that I'm really worried about when it comes to actually making a Speed Racer show. The Wachowskis leaned way too hard into the anime feel with like these weird quick shots and they used all their money to make this weird CG blend movie with weird effects and awkward storytelling. And I love that movie. I genuinely think it's a strong piece of art. Weird choice is being done for everybody, but it's a strong piece of art that is being made. That being said, you can't do that weekly on television in live action because your audience won't be able to sustain that. But if you don't do that, it's just going to be some stupid racing show that no one's going to give a shit about. So it's kind of like a weird blend where it's like, is this something we should even be doing or is this something that is just being made because we now own the rights to Speed Racer in America and we have to put JJ on something? Look, man, I don't want to see this. I don't think this deserves to be made. I don't want it to be made. I desperately want to do a commentary on the Speed Racer movie. So I'm thinking at some point when things are going to pick up a little bit more, we will be talking about Speed Racer. Let's move past that, though, because we could sit here all day talking about the if, ands, and buts of a movie and a TV show that failed and doesn't exist yet. We could jump over to something that excites me. This is the last piece of news before we get into celebration stuff. I really had to bring this up because it's so interesting to me. It's rare in our time that something major goes into public domain. Everybody just wants to buy up everything and keep its, keep its copyright going forever. But a new thing has entered the public domain, and that is the story of Winnie the Pooh, all of the characters associated with Winnie the Pooh. It has reached public domain, and because of that, people can finally make their movies based on Winnie the Pooh. Such is the case with this new horror movie called Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. So 
I I am 100% on board for taking a public domain thing and fucking with it. Just make it the weirdest, craziest, most random bullshit thing you can think of. There are certain expectations to be made when you're doing something in the popular zeitgeist that is owned by something. You can't turn Jurassic Park into a horror movie. Sadly, it's got to be blockbuster franchising. But if Winnie the Pooh is now available for anybody to touch, fuck yeah, dude. Make your weird horror movie. This movie's about Winnie the Pooh and Piglet going on like a rampage after being abandoned by Christopher Robin. They become cannibals and killers and start hunting people. Oh, I am so on board. I'm on board. Do it. I don't care. It's not sacred. They could do this with vampires and Dracula and it's fine. Why would Winnie the Pooh be any different? Anybody can touch it now. Don't think this can be one thing. It can be anything now. This is awesome. I love this news. It makes me so happy. So incredibly. I just enjoy it. I just fucking enjoy it. Like, this is great. Let's do it. This is, I, I want to do a video literally talking about what we can do with Winnie the Pooh now. I have so many great ideas. We can do the Joker, but it's Eeyore. We can do like a tell-all tale where Tigger is like, I am mentally fucked up. The dirt, but it's Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> We could do Christopher Robin <laughs> murders his stuffed animals on the entire time he's been in the psych ward. Like, yes, let's do it. Let's, ah, oh, I love it. I love this. And it looks so dumb and stupid. Very slashery, very B-list superhero stuff. I, I fucking love it. I love it. This is everything I want in my, in my live action Winnie the Pooh shit. Get weird of it. Get crazy. Do not sit. Do not sit and rest on this. Have fun. Get in there and make something weird. So when we take a break, we're going to come back and jump into the world of Star Wars Celebration. So stay tuned. Oh, the wonderful world of Star Wars Celebration, where anything is possible and everything is possible. Look, I, I'm not going to talk about everything that was revealed at Celebration, because there's a lot of stuff that I don't normally cover on the Geek Wave that was revealed. I will say briefly, the comics are doing wondrous things. There was a big comic book revealed featuring Yoda as the lead. That's exciting. That's kind of fun. I'm all for Yoda taking the big step to comics, but he's a popular character. They showed off the new High Republic books. Those excite me. I, I'm, I'm a fan of the High Republic era. I'm behind on one book. I'm eventually going to get to reading that. I have it queued up in the audiobook, so eventually I will get to that. Also, they re they showed off some new... I think they showed a trailer, right? For the new Fallen Order survival game. Uh, I, I've i played the first one. I thought the mechanics became too just Dark Souls-y for me. And I didn't like that too much. So I was just like, I'm not excited for the next one. But I, I like a good story. Hopefully by the time that game is released... I will have a console I could play it on, and then maybe we'll stream some stuff with that being played. That's just a maybe. I'm throwing it out there. We'll see what happens. Anybody wants to buy me a PlayStation, PlayStation, I'm not getting an Xbox, please let me know. So those are things that were also revealed. There's some really cool panels being had. Kelly Marie Tran and Billy Lord just had a really cool one. I enjoyed listening to those women talk. They're just great. And I, I love Kelly Marie Tran. She is one of my favorite people out there. I, I think she's spectacularly fun and cool. And she's somebody I'd want to work with. She seems like a really lovely woman. They really shit in the bed when, with the Rise of Skywalker and her. They did. I'm sorry. They really did. So with that, we can actually dive deeper into some of the other stuff that was revealed for Star Wars Celebration. I talked briefly about this on the live stream I did the other day, but we're going to get a little more in-depth on it here. So we got the first look, the first teaser for Andor. They've confirmed that this is going to be two seasons. Each season is going to have 12 episodes, and the second season is going to take place over a year, ending up where we meet him in Rogue One. I kind of like that. There's something really simple about, like, we know the character's going to die. We know where our timeline's going to go. So we can tell our story up until that moment. It doesn't matter where it starts or ends. We know where it's going to end. That's kind of cool. And this trailer was really not what I was expecting. It's not really Diego Luna heavy. He is in it. But it, it kind of, like, focuses more on, like, a world being built around, the like, the destruction 
of the Clone War. You know, it's like here, here's the new regime taking over. Here's the Empire building itself. And suddenly these people who were all for like the separatists and everything, they're like, no, this is wrong. This new regime is not what we want to see. That's kind of exciting. That's like really cool. I like all like the lower heavy stuff in Star Wars, but like the Jedi and shit. But I also love just like how it focuses on a war. There is good and there is bad. And you see that Cassian's family started off with the separatists. They were separatists and they slowly moved and realized, no, this is wrong. We should rebel against this regime. It's not healthy. It's not good. And then it kind of like morphs into like this really cool political thriller vibe. And I think that's awesome because a lot of Star Wars right now is very spaghetti Western. And that's exciting. That's cool. It's kind of also like gangstery and that's fine. But I love a good political thriller. I love if we can just be in like a boardroom talking to a bunch of weird senators and losers and people in the empire and we can tell a good story that way. I'm all for that shit. So I'm very excited to see what this is going to do. Cassian Andor was such a fun character and Diego Luna. Oh, I could I could sing from the rooftops how much I love this man. He is so interesting to watch on screen. He is such a fun presence. I cannot wait to see this. Oh, it looks good. Like Andor is probably my most excited project they've announced. And it starts up in August. And I'm like, that's so soon. And this is another thing that's kind of starting to happen now. There's so many of these shows being made. They're bleeding over now with the Marvel stuff. So even like the upcoming weeks, Obi-Wan is going to be bleeding over with Ms. Marvel. She-Hulk is definitely going to be bleeding over with Andor. Very interesting. Very interesting, but this looks fantastic. It sounds amazing. It sounds like we're going to see a lot of cool characters. Mon Mothma will be returning, which is very fun. I imagine we'll see be seeing appearances from other people. If I had to guess on like a really cool cameo, I don't know if it would happen, but Alden Ehrenreich would be really fucking cool. Donald Glover would be really fucking cool. Amelia Clark would be really fucking cool. Anybody from the solo movie would be so good. I would lit- I would chew it up and spit it out if we saw them. Oh, that'd be yummy, yummy, yummy. I'd love that. But no, this is going to be really fun. Alan Tudyk will be back as K2SO. Yeah, give me that shit, man. That is so exciting. This looks so fun. I cannot wait to see this. I'm wondering if I should do weekly reviews on Andor. Maybe I might do. A- I might take a break, like do six episodes at a time. We'll see. I'm very excited to see that, though. That's going to be really fun. Aside from that, there was some other live-action news we can talk about. A while, I think a couple weeks ago, actually, I talked about John Watts stepping away from Fantastic Four. Now we realize that he's going to be working on a television series for Star Wars. We, we learned with that a little bit more about that. It's going to be called Star Wars Skeleton Crew. Fun title. I think that's kind of, it's a good title. It's a really fun, just like a small ship, not a lot of people on it. And again, it's the 80s, it's the Amblin, it's the coming of age story. I don't need to see that. I I, it, uh, it, I guess in an era where Stranger Things has once again returned to the popular zeitgeist, you can do that. I'd kind of like it to be more like Stand By Me, though, where it's like, instead of like referencing things in Star Wars where these kids are like, do you remember like Luke Skywalker? Here's our fake lightsabers. Look how cool we are. I'd like it more these kids are just like, this place sucks. Let's just go somewhere and do something. That would be really fun to see. That's a little more interesting. I kind of said this the other day, too. I think John Watts is really good of playing in that smaller scale and like giving personal stories with these characters, with people learning about their stories. I think that's kind of fun. We also learned that one of the actors attached to this project is Jude Law. And my first instinct, my, the first thing I thought of was like, oh, they're going to Star Trek Prodigy this. And for those of you who don't know, Star Trek Prodigy is the animated thing going on right now. Star Trek, it's more like the younger side of the content they're making for Star Trek. But a bunch of like younger characters stumble upon a ship Janeway is in there. She's like a hologram AI that talks through the ship. And she's like, let's go on a mission. Blah, blah, blah. My first reaction hearing Jude Law is going to be one of the lead people in this thing is like, oh, it's going to be his ship. He's going to be an AI. They're going to find him. Hologram himself to talk to the kids on the ship. That's literally what I thought. If it's different, that would be surprising. My only hope, like one of the only things I really want to see is characters that are not human 
Which is hard to ask for in Star Wars sometimes. Can't our leads be anything other than human looking? You know? Can we do that, please? Can we try to step away in that direction and try something new? Would that be all right to ask for? Can we do that, please? Could we do that, please? Whatever. Looks cool. It's going to be fun. Skeleton Crew next year. Also next year, Mandalorian Season 3 is coming. They showed some footage. It leaked everywhere. You could find it if you want. Din is returning to Mandalore. Him and Grogu are going to fight Bo-Katan. Very cool. It's going to be exciting. And I guess John Favreau's already working on Season 4. So, holy shit. You really just can't let it rest for a minute. That's exciting, though. When everybody who's involved in this loves it, that's great. No one mentions Cara Dune. I support that. I support that heavily. We don't need to mention her. Let's move past it. Get on with our lives. All aboard the crazy train. <laughs> but more Mandalorian is never a bad thing. We also got a, a few more things in terms of live action. Again, stuff leaked. The Ahsoka show was heavily talked about because that's also going to be coming out in 2023. They're hard at work on it right now. Which, of course, they are. They have to get that ready. But they showed a little, a couple, a couple, a couple shots with uh, characters we've seen before, characters like Sabine Wren, characters like Chopper, like Harris and Dula. Okay, we're doing it, Dave Filoni, you son of a bitch. You are getting to make your rebels in live action, buddy. You're doing it, and again, Mina Misoud has been teasing. He's Ezra. Oh, he better be. He'd be so good for that. This is this is it, man. You have been playing with Ahsoka since you created her in the Clone Wars movie. You've loved that character. You have birthed that character. You are coming to her natural conclusion. I love it. I love it. Like, this is it, man. This is what you've been doing. It's very cool. Uh, Sabine's in it. They, they have an actress for her. She's the only actress that they've confirmed so far. They show Chopper on stage, which I'm like, yeah, Chopper's just a little robot, a big murderous robot who has a huge death count, but he's still cool. So I'm on board for that. Give me more Chopper. Give me more Chopper. And I'm always there for Hera. Hera is such a fun character. I really like seeing her. Will we get a uh, Kanan Force Ghost talking to Ezra if he appears? Probably. Probably see that. And, and of course, that's what's going on. You know, that means Thrawn's on the way. You know, that means Thrawn's on the way. Who are they going to get to play Thrawn? I bet you it's somebody in the Disney family currently. Who's like one of those guys they just picked up recently? I'm trying to think because they're all over the place. <laughs> Benedict? Would it be? Would Benedict come to TV? Probably. He did Sherlock. So maybe, maybe it'll be Benedict. Awesome. Just awesome. I love all that. There's probably more live action stuff in the works they didn't talk about. I guess, too, they had, like, the whole Lucasfilm department come out to talk about stuff. Uh, Willow is coming in November. That's really soon. I didn't think they were that far into development on Willow, but I guess they're they're ready to show it. There was a trailer that I did not watch because I, I completely forgot about Willow, but I'm all aboard for Willow. All aboard the Willow train. I'm steering this bitch. Let's go. Harrison Ford came out and everyone's like, oh, shit, it's Harrison Ford. And he's like, guess what? I am 89,000 years old and I made Indiana Jones 5. Here's a picture. Stay tuned next year to see me probably go to the moon or something because he would be 76 by the when this was filmed and that character would also be the same age. And they'd be in the 60s. Is that right? 70s? Would it be in the 70s? It was the 30s in the first one, and that was 40 years ago, give or take 40, like 41 years ago. So he was at least 30. So if the character aged 40 years from being 30 in the first one, it would be somewhere in the 70s. But we could fudge that around, and it could be the space race. <laughs> Please be the space race. Oh, Harrison. Harrison, Harrison, Harrison animated stuff we can talk about this a little bit tales of the jedi animated shorts featuring dooku qui-gon and ahsoka okay okay i don't know if i care i do i mean i do care but it's like yeah, okay i see what you mean star wars visions season two will be dropping this year as well 
Those were fun. I guess they're also going to be getting comic books for the Visions characters. It's a great idea. I did not see all of Visions. I was just like, I, I understand. I just don't, I, there's not enough time to watch everything. So I've been very selective in recent times about what I spend money on to watch. I spend money is a weird way to put it, but I'll stick by that. So that's exciting. Tales of the Young Jedi. You know, is this what it's called? Young Jedi. I think it's Young Jedi Adventures. This is going to be their younger demographic target show. And it's going to be set in the High Republic era, which is an era I'm very fond of. And it's just going to be watching like Young Jedi learning to do Jedi stuff in an era where there is Vikings blasting through space and hurting people. All aboard that train. <laughs> I like that. I think that's a really fun idea. I genuinely like that concept. Very fun. Because, look, Star Wars kind of recently has been aimed for older audiences. And they tried to do, like, one again for younger audiences called Resistance. Nobody watched it because it looked bad and it was a dumb show. So maybe if they do stuff in the style of Rebels, people will actually go to see it again and watch it. And we could get some cool stuff. Not enough mention of the Acolyte anywhere either. Which I understand you're probably going to wait a little bit to talk about that one more. They, they did say like 100 years before The Phantom Menace. Cool. I want to see that still. <laughs> I still want to see that one almost more than others. And then Bad Batch, right? Yeah, the Bad Batch I think is the last piece of news we have to talk about. Yeah, trailer. It's coming this year. Awesome. Commander Cody will be appearing in it. Rex will be returning in it. It looks like they're updating their suits a little bit. It looks like Omega's going to get a little bit older. That's fun. I have to imagine there's been conversations of where they're going to put Ahsoka in stuff. There has to be. I wonder if we're going to see Tamura as one of the Bad Batch guys. I feel like he's just like resigned himself to becoming this character forever again, which is kind of cool. Yeah, this is a, this is great. Rep, I fucking loved the Bad Batch. Like That show was fun. And it looked cool. And it was such a unique concept. Like, it's such a great idea. Like, here's the ones that didn't work out properly. We're going to send them to a paramilitary force. And they're going to be the weirdest people out there. Very kind of like, oh, what, what was that stupid thing? G.I. Joe. <laughs> Very G.I. Joe, I thought. And just Because like, they're all it's like specific. Here's the tech guy. Here's the bruiser. Here's the one of no arm. Here's Rambo. <laughs> it was really cool. And Omega. Here's the child. Here's the Ninja Turtles and their little pet turtle. It's cool. So that looks great. I love the new colors on the suits. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun to come back to the world of the Bad Batch because that show is incredibly cool. Can't wait to see what they do. Genuinely cannot wait. And that is all the news we have from Celebration. We're going to take a quick break and we come back. Here's a topic I've been thinking about for a while. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Okay, look, we all know I'm on the younger side of things. I grew up in an era when people watched a certain type of Star Wars movie. I grew up in an era when a certain type of Star Wars movie wasn't really liked. And now I'm starting to see a shift in things. And that's weird to me because mm, it's, not, it's, not, it's not worth it. We shouldn't, we shouldn't do this. We really shouldn't do this. Look. There has been a huge shift in recent times, a massive colossal shift in recent times, where suddenly everyone who grew up watching the prequel movies is saying like, no, no they're, they're good. They're a little weird. They got weird CG, but they're, they're good. Look at the fun. Look at how good this story. Look at these characters. Look at the love. Look at the respect. I don't get it. <laughs> Why is this happening? So we like the prequels now? Is is that the is that the cultural term for it? I think it's fascinating. I, and I want to kind of like talk about like why this is happening in a sense. I think it's because we're getting more content. This is really it. Suddenly we're realizing we're going to expand on these stories so we can look at the stuff happening in those bad movies and be like, no, they serve a purpose. They get us to these better stories with other things. And that's okay. But still, they're bad movies. And I I understand how some people who grew up on this era love it. Look, I co-workers, friends, family that I know enjoy the hell out of these movies. And I could never do it. Even when I was younger, 
even as I am now, I can't go back and enjoy the Phantom Menace or Attack of the Clones or Revenge of the Sith. Not in the way that I'm supposed to. I can look at key moments and be like, oh yes, this is an interesting concept being made. But I can't, I can't like these movies. And look, I am happier than any, I'm as happy as anybody, I should say, that Ewan McGregor, that Hayden Christensen, that Natalie Portman are all finding new life with these characters and with new characters they're a part of. I love that. I think that's fantastic. But don't tell me these films are good. They're not. They are poorly paced, poorly written. The story beats go nowhere. The, the ideas are so rushed. The final movie is so poorly created and its final moments are so forced and don't come across as natural. It's a painful thing to watch. I really don't like them. And the acting is something we could spend an entire year talking about because it's bad. It's not good. It's one of those cases where a director is given a free range to do whatever they want. And when nobody says no, nobody calls out the blatant sexism or racism. Nobody says this looks bad. We're rushing this too much. Nobody asks the question, why do we do this? Why is everything happening now that's going to lead up to the events of 19 years later? Those are problems that these films have. And I I don't like them. I can't like them. I I just can't do it. I am so happy for people who can because I think that's great. One of my friends and somebody who I, I've known for a while now, he always talks about the prequels as his favorite. Like he just loves them. He knows every single detail about the ships and the ideas being presented there because that's the one he grew up on. He, and he tells me all the time. It's like, these are the films he likes and he respects and he admires and he likes the other ones the same but these ones are just something about the story. I guess that's interesting. And maybe it's a generational thing that really shifted people's perspective. I know a lot of younger people who have a soft spot for this era of Star Wars. And I, I guess that's good. I guess it's it did its job when young people just looked at the shiny lights and didn't notice that no one's acting good. No one, no one is acting good. That's good, I guess. That's kind of exciting to see. And... I, I do enjoy that aspect of things. I enjoy that people can like it. But I just think it's insane that we're praising it now, but we didn't back then. You know, like as a culture, as a, as like a, a popular identity for this thing, we thought they were bad. We, we all thought they were bad. They, they rushed things. They didn't work. They looked bad. They said stupid stuff. But now it's like, no, we need these stories to get where we're going. They're, they're important to these characters. Are they really? Are they really important? It doesn't sound like they're important. It just sounds like people can't accept the idea that all the stories don't matter. And and that's fine. Look, I like the idea of an expanded universe and all this shit and whatever the fuck. Who cares? But it's like, it, it, they don't need to be referenced. It, it doesn't matter that much, really. So we don't have to pretend they're good. We don't have to pretend they're interesting when they're not. But that's fine. Look, let's talk a little bit about each film, and then I'll kind of get into like what what I what's the fuck am I doing? What is this now? I, I talked about celebration. Now I'm like, let's fucking shit on the prequels for a bit. Phantom Menace. I hate this movie. <laughs> it's so boring, so lazy, so obvious, so cliched. Attack of the Clones. I think is the worst one because it forces Padme and Anakin to find each other. Look, you could. <sighs> I I get what they had to do because you had to have Anakin be the father, but it is so forced and painful. No chemistry, no moments that work. It's bad. The arena scene is so ugly and dumb looking. It, it, it all hurts. And look, I think the easiest way to digest all of these films is in clips. And that kind of sucks because if you can be like, What's the key moment about their relationship? Oh, you can watch this clip. What, what what happens to the Jedi? Oh, here's Order 66. Here's Dooku fighting them. Here's the Separatists and all that stuff. Here's the basic gist of what's happening on film. You want to watch the Bad Batch? Oh, here's where the clones come from, and here's Kamino and all that shit. That's all fine. Like, I think that makes it a little bit easier. But to actually sit down and dedicate, like, two and a half hours of your life, it really hurts. And I, I, I know people think Revenge of the Sith is the best one. I don't like it. 
I think it's just so bad. There's like one, you could say the Mustafar stuff is good, but I'd be like, is it really? Are we just conditioned to say it's good because the rest of it is worse? Everything can be bad in a film when you can still enjoy it. That's fine. Look, I, I'm an avid defender of Sharknado. That franchise is my favorite film franchise of all time. I will defend that till the day I die. But even I know there's a little bit of self-awareness to that. And, and when you're doing something like this where we're supposed to take every action seriously, it loses some of that momentum. So here, so that was that out of the way. My thoughts on this out of the way. Let's talk a little bit about why I think the cultural opinion has changed. We touched on it a little bit. The generation that grew up with it is now talking about Star Wars and now actively doing these things. Look, I was born in 98, to date myself there. The first one came out in 99. This was in the popular zeitgeist when I was growing up. Did I have any idea what was going on when I saw those films? No, I just saw a farting alien or something. But it was there, so it's already ingrained in me. Like I remember specifically having this huge toy chest. It, I had a huge toy chest of like all these cool like animal stuff because I was really into animals and dinosaurs when I was a kid. But for some fucking reason, there was just a Dexter Jetster in there. And I just remember specifically thinking like, here's where my draft is going to go. Here's where my rhinoceros is going to go. Why do I have this fat alien with four arms? I, rem I just remember thinking that all the time. And that generation, that's my generation. The ones that I am from, we grew up with the prequels. And now we are kind of able to communicate more. Social media has given us this new thing. That's another thing we could talk about. The prequels are good again because social media is allowing people to voice their opinions. You, we can sit here all day and talk about the negatives of social media and like Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, and TikTok, and everything. But the truth is, there is good stuff to be said about all of that because now things that maybe weren't appreciated at the time can kind of come back in the popular knowledge again. Case in point. Yeah, case in point. That's the right word. Speed Racer. I was just talking about Speed Racer in the news. It's a good movie. Nobody saw it. But now if we talk about it again, it can suddenly become something important again. And that's exciting. So I think that's also a part of like the culture. We are able to communicate more. And things are allowed to be more nuanced now. They don't have to be black and white. They don't have to be 100 and 0. They could be 50, 60, 70, 40, 30, 20. It doesn't matter. You can like what you like now. It's okay. Another thing, like I said at the beginning, we are making new content to benefit these things. Of course, we have Obi-Wan, which is doing wonders for that. We have The Mandalorian, which is connecting to that. The Book of Boba Fett, which connects into that. The Bad Batch, which connects into that. But the big one that I think really helped it out, that really made it work, was The Clone Wars. Because The Clone Wars said, no, there was time between these movies. Look at the world being destroyed. Look at this clone army that we didn't flesh out in the films, aside from a few certain characters. Now you can look at them and see their story. You can see Anakin had a Padawan. Anakin had motivations. He was always kind of brash and angry, and that's where he comes. And you feel like the connection between Obi-Wan and Anakin flesh out more. And that, to me, is a really important thing to see. And that made it work better. And I think all of those things really just helped the universe, the world, I should say, just understand the prequels more. Because now we can just look at it like they're bad, but we have to put them in the actual story. Not every single chapter in a book is great. Not every single story in a tr like a trilogy or a quadrilogy is perfect. You look at what you're given and you accept it for what it is. And I think that's kind of what we've done with the prequels now. We've accepted the good, the bad, and the ugly. And we can move past it and just be like, it's here. We can tolerate it. We're good. <laughs> and that's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I just don't I just don't get like wh why people say the movies are good <laughs> because they're not good. They're not good, they're bad, but I I respect the hell out of anything that can do this. And look, as much as I don't like the prequel movies, I like the world about it. There's some interesting stuff it explores that it does poorly. Like that actual Clone Wars is kind of interesting to see. The world of the Jedi is interesting in that because they're just useless, easily slaughtered creatures. It's kind of fun. It's kind of interesting. It's just poorly executed. And I, I just think that's kind of interesting. A very interesting thing to explore. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, Star Wars. 
You son of a bitch, Star Wars. Hey, just doing so much weird stuff. But no, there's there's cool stuff in there. Look, I, I have openly said Padme is one of my favorite characters. I respect the hell out of her. She's got the bad... Tra- I think Natalie Portman had such a bad treatment. And that character just dying for no reason really pisses me off. There's no need for it. There's no need to do that or have that happen. Just say she was killed by somebody else or something stupid else happened. I don't know. It was weird. And seeing the love return for Hayden Christensen is great because that's the other thing that I'm glad we are doing now. Like, there is benefits to this. There, there's negative things to this because suddenly it shows you, okay, oh, okay, pace yourself, bud. You're fine. The negative parts of this is that people are praising a bad movie. Like, now people will be like, okay, with that being the exception, that sucks. What the good part is, Hayden Christensen, Ahmed Best, Jake Lloyd, these men who were berated and treated badly for their performances can that take solace in knowing that maybe people respect and admire them now we've learned to treat them better and acknowledge them for the work they've done and that is more important than any of the other shit we could talk about is that people are expect respecting the good that these actors have done that's way more important and that's way more interesting than the rest of this phony baloney crap so i guess we do like the prequels now (laughs) that's cool it's kind of fun. That's interesting. Look, as much as I, I will rag on them forever, I have read a lot of comics from that era. I have action figures from that era. I have played Battlefront 2 with my friends endlessly, and it was in that era. And I hate the Droidicas in that stupid game. But it's it's important. It made the story work, and now people can appreciate it for what it is. Because if we the more we talk about it, the more it is accepting of these things. That's with any topic or any genre. The more we talk about something, the more easy it is to talk about it, and the more we can accept it for what it was. So it's kind of cool that Star Wars could do the same, find its footing that way. That's exciting. That's kind of cool. Congratulations, Star Wars. You aren't the worst thing to happen anymore. And the prequels have found their audience. Congratulations to the prequels. So before we wrap things up, I do like to end things with a couple of recommendations. I don't really know what kind of recommendations to give because we have been talking about Star Wars all day. Watch The Bad Batch. Watch Obi-Wan Kenobi. Read the most recent Darth Vader miniseries because it's a brilliant take on his relationship to Padme. I really enjoyed that comic, so you could check that out. Anything in the High Republic is fantastic. And of course, Winnie the Pooh, anything. Christopher Robin's a pretty good movie, so check that out. Now, thank you guys so much for listening to this rambling on about Star Wars for a little bit. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And if you're listening to this on the podcast feed, please give us a rating over there. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. May the Force be with you. Live long and prosper to infinity and beyond. God help us all.